Sagittarius, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation by Born Without Boundaries. Welcome guys, in this video we're gonna go over the major planetary aspects and transits for this week, the week of April 18th to the 24th, wrote it down in my little, my little, my little notepad, April 18th through the 24th of 2023. We're gonna start really, really broad with the things that are impacting all of us, and then I'm gonna narrow it down to how those things are specifically impacting Sagittarians, and then we're gonna get into how those things are directly impacting your life because how are they impacting your natal sun so how do I know where your natal sun is I do not you do by looking at your natal chart or by knowing your birth date right so look at your natal chart that's the most accurate way and if you want a natal chart you can get them run for free online just have your birth date which you already have birth time and birthplace ready you can plug it right in their platforms and then they'll spit one out for you in a couple of seconds they is a number of websites that do it just search free natal chart now I will give you correlating dates um, that will help you out and understand about where your son is placed and the impact on it but the dates are never going to be the most accurate so when you get a chance go get your natal chart if your natal son is located between zero and nine degrees Sagittarius you are a Sagittarius one if your natal son is located between 10 and 19 degrees Sagittarius you are a Sagittarius two and if your natal son is located between 20 and 29 degrees Sagittarius you are a Sagittarius three so let's get into the big there's actually quite a few big things that are happening so first thing is April 19th we have a new moon in Aries we've already had a new moon in Aries in Aries season so this is the second new moon in Aries that we're having this Aries season this happens once every three years about three years it is called a double moon and on this double moon we are also experiencing a solar eclipse it is now eclipse season so we've got a solar eclipse and the second new moon a double moon which doesn't happen that often to make it even more special this moon is square to Pluto and conjunct Jupiter holy crap is all I have to say it's almost like a bunch of built-up energy we didn't know what to do with and the universe just came and blew a hole in the side of the fortress and every all that energy can just rush out it's kind of like that so new starts new beginnings are gonna happen that's the kind of energy it is like ruthless insistence on absolute newness um yeah we we ain't gonna take it anymore is basically what it is um mercury is going in retrograde on the 21st of this month of, of this month so the 21st is a couple days from now um we've already started to feel this i experienced it this morning it's quite bad because it is exacerbated by the fact that mercury when it's going into retrograde is conjunct uranus so tech failures you know major tech failures technology cell phones internet all that kind of stuff that uranus rules the, like the big tech the advanced tech meltdown absolutely and on like it's going to reach all of us so this is going to be a wacky one um Mercury uh, will be in retrograde conjunct Uranus basically all of this week. It'll eventually retrograde back further into Taurus, um, so it won't be conjunct uh, Uranus for long. It'll eventually conjunct the Sun. Lots of weird stuff, this Mercury retrograde. But we have um, another big transit. How am I forgetting this? The sun is going into Taurus. The sun is leaving about an hour after the new moon, which is, if you're on the East Coast, early in the morning. Like, it's between, it, it's, it's, it's between like 11 and 1, depending on what, 1 a.m. So it's like, it's depending on where you are on the globe. It's either late at night or early, early, early in the morning. And you'll be able to see the solar eclipse if you're located in, in parts of India or Australia. But definitely not up here in the uh, northern hemisphere. I think we're going to be in the dark at that point. So, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll still feel the impact of it. Um, but the sun is moving into Taurus, which is a very stabilizing energy. It's a very traditional energy. It's a sense of the traditional ruler. 
Um, and then we're looking for that forward to on May 5th, the full moon that's happening. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. What we're talking about now is the sun. So our mentality, our purpose, it's transiting into a very traditional place, but untraditional things are going on because Uranus is still there and now it's conjunct Mercury retrograde. So it's like, you know, the king may be back in the castle, but there's so much chaos, I'm not sure how much it's going to matter is what I'm saying. There's a lot of distraction, I think, from the things that are real quality. So if we can take some time to just find a quiet space and realize there are some things that should be constants because they make sense and they make us healthy. And it's those things that while the sun is in Taurus, we should really focus on and find in our lives. Now, excuse me, for those of you who are into astrology, you already know that Sagittarius' ruling dignitary is Jupiter. And Jupiter is in an interesting sort of space right now because it is conjunct the new moon and the sun when the new moon happens. Um, it's in the beginning of the week. It's sort of semi-square to Venus. But all week long, or starting on 422, Jupiter is square to Pluto. And that is really combustible energy. It's sort of ruthless optimism where I'm gonna make this shit happen. And this is where big breakthroughs or changes will come, even if you don't want them to. There's just this energy of forward, like it or not, that kind of energy. So let's get into how it's gonna impact your natal suns. So if you are a Sagittarius that's born in November, you're you're a Sagittarius one. That's pretty much you. Um, Sagittarius ones, your natal sun is sextile to Pluto, which means these breakthroughs, this ruthlessness, it's opening up opportunities for you. You are gonna get it done. There's no way that you won't have the impact. It's not a controlling impact, it's not manipulative, it's just formidable and it just, makes things work. So this is a really productive time for you and that'll last for a couple of years because Pluto will be sextile to your natal sun for quite some time. Pluto doesn't move fast. So for you guys, the next couple of years could be looking really, really good um, in terms of opportunity or progress in your life. Like I'm not gonna take not changing anymore. These are major changes that you're going through and that open up great doors for you. Um, we have, because um, now Pluto is in Aquarius, so it probably could be, it opens up great doors when it comes to society, notoriety, doing something that people know about, people liking what you do, doing something for the people, by the people, that kind of energy it could even be, be going public in some way. Um, or changing how all that works, really interesting. Then we have, um, maybe up until July, August. Your sun is also quincunx to the north node. Um, what does that mean? It means that there's bumps. It means that you're focused you're focused on the future, but at the same time, there's gonna be bumps. There's, you're gonna to have to make changes. It's gonna be challenging. Now, with that sextile of Pluto, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind so much because honestly, that motherfucker will blast through mountains and it's, it's gonna work for you. But it may be harder to accept where you're headed, where you're going. I think it's just pressing on you and not letting you rest. And there's the, that's what really what it is. There's an insistency to change. Change your life, change your lifestyle, change your career. There's an insistence on moving forward. And for the next couple of years, you'll be relentless at it. I think it'll just add to the relentlessness. And then you have another long-term transit that is a trine to Neptune, which means there is a harmony when it comes to your creative ability and your ability to have faith in the unknown and the unseen and to be able to see the unknown and the unseen so accurately that you can manifest it more easily. So this is a really productive time for you guys. Productive and passionate and creative and life-changing. These, these are major life changes, but in a, in a positive way. Um, this... Dec uh, the second decan of Sagittarius. So you guys, your birthdays, and this is an estimate because the dates of the zodiac signs, even though they're in about the same place, they kind of change. Um, 
because the sun always isn't in the same place on the uh, on every specific on the specific day every single year that's not how it works so the estimate for you guys would probably be like December 1st or 2nd through the 11th or 12th. That kind of energy is Sagittarius 2's. Um, your natal sun this week, because Venus is in Gemini, is directly opposite Venus. So it, it's almost like there's just frustration, like financial stuff. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it won't let you go. It's kind of relentless. You have to constantly think about it. You have to constantly work it. You have to constantly do it. It's just, it's just a constant agitation also a sense of your looks how you feel about your vanity maybe the way you feel about your the aesthetics of your environment is sort of relentless it's not it's not it's nagging at you it's not the best time to change things or to do any big changes to your hair or your looks it's not the best time to schedule cosmetic surgery um, I would definitely wait till it's the opposition is passed but it's just kind of relentless right now and that has to do with value you know, not challenges, but like it's it's something just nagging at you. It's like doing taxes, kind of, because Venus does rule finances too, um, and we are in tax season. So it's like it just won't let you rest. There's always something else you have to do. So that it can get very frustrating and challenging and exhausting. FYI, that'll only last a week. A long-term transit that you guys have been in. Your natal suns are are uh, trying to your natal suns are trying to Chiron. Um, what does this mean? It means you're healing. It means you're healing a major pain or suffering or hurt. It means you're going through a catharsis that helps you transmute that pain and those experiences into ways to help others and be productive and find a purpose. And in doing so, heal yourself. Since Chiron is in Aries, this could also be about actually healing or doing a lot of work on healing your physical body. Now that's been going on for a while. This is not new. So at least for the past couple of months, this has definitely been impacting you and it will for a couple of more. So this is a great time to focus on getting yourself, especially your physical self, healthier. Um, and then we also have, hello, a frustrating, a quincunx. Quincunx is frustration. That's kind of what it is. Mercury retrograde and Uranus, your natal suns are going to be quincunx to that conjunction. So definitely expect a lot of frustration coming because of technical mishaps, mistakes, this mercury retrograde is going to be really exacerbated for you guys uh very frustrating and this week may be a little extra frustrating because you're also quincunx to mars now mars moves pretty quickly maybe in about a week and a half it won't be impacting you anymore but ultimately for right now this is also a sense of why can't I get things done? Well, there's a lot of technical sh that's going on. So it's almost like it could be a lot of family drama as well since Mars is in Cancer. Just a sense of challenges, challenges with tech, challenges with family, maybe just challenges with family because of the tech breaking down. Whatever it is, frustration this week. FYI, breathe. And then we have Sagittarius 3s. So you guys, this would be like the December 12th maybe through the 22nd or December 11th through the 21st, whatever day um, um, Sagittarius ends on in the year that you were born. Um, your natal sun, this is actually a very spiritual time for you. You got a long-term transit with Saturn. So this aspect will last a while. And it's sextile. So this is progress, especially when it comes to your work. Right, but you also have a trine to Jupiter, which is going to be be more short term. It's going to impact you kind of uh, like for this week. Um, it's going to impact you, make you very optimistic, make you very sort of positive, make you very hopeful, make you make you see possibilities where maybe you didn't see them before, and also just have such a bright spirit that you would draw and attract opportunities to you. Um, that is going to help you combat a longer transit that you've been experiencing already, which is the square to Neptune. And this can last for up to like, I don't know, six years. Like this, this just means that there's almost like disillusionment, like losing faith in things. And because of that, sometimes it's easier for you to get bamboozled. And because you just are get so frustrated by it, you want like get 
get get get rich quick schemes or you losing yourself in fantasy as opposed to using fantasy to help liberate your creativity that's the good way to use this square instead of escaping constantly more and more escaping more and more watching more and more video time listening more and more to the radio instead of actually doing something with your life you can focus yourself by being creative like let this energy inspire creativity through you instead of letting it use you and distract you and that's how you'll make progress and this week is a good week to get started because of that helpful trying to Jupiter so put yourself into something creative or a place that you can really use your creativity every day on the regular so that you're not it's the difference between composing music writing music performing music and just sitting in your room for hours listening to music you're distracted it's making you you may you may feel relief at first but it's actually separating you from the rest of the world and it's not good it's not healthy and it can mess you up so take this energy and this need to escape into creativity by being creative and and using the creativity instead of letting it use you and this week is a good week to kick that off because with that uh trying to jupiter with to your natal suns you'll opportunities will open up for you and you should get right into them and you'll also be feeling more optimistic as well so you'll you'll get that energy charge so that you can initiate something or start something I love you guys, and I hope that you love this reading. Please do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet, and absolutely come on over and join me on Born Without Boundaries Tarot for your week ahead tarot reading. I'll see you guys there.